Now, talking about being net positive, let's turn our attention to the next topic and talk about Ethan Klein. So this was a um, a section that, uh, uh, like a a clip that um, Brett Cooper did from The Daily Wire. She has a a podcast called, um, or a a YouTube channel called The Comment Section with Brett Cooper, where she just kind of comments on you know, things that are happening in pop culture and, and goes through all the the interesting comments that, that actually flow from that. Go and check her channel out, channel out. It's really good. Keeps me updated on a bunch of things that are happening in in uh, in kind of pop culture and, and po- she's a little political. So, um, but uh, she has been speaking about a gentleman called Ethan Klein. Now, he is... Um, uh, from Hate Three Productions, right? Now, once again, we're talking about how do we, as you, know, as leaders, how do we control your enemies? How do we make sure we have a control on situations rather than allowing the situation to control us? And I think Ethan Klein is a perfect example of how not to do it, because he's just gone through this challenge. He started up this this um, podcast or YouTube channel where he was, I wouldn't call him a prankster, but he was definitely more just a, a, a skit kind of just, just jovial play around, just make fun, like kind of more of a comedy based channel, I suppose. He's not a comedian. He might be a comedian, but I wouldn't classify him as a comedian, but, um, but he, he has recently done a shift to becoming very political and his audience is attacking him so much so that now he's gotten to a point where he's taking a break from social media and stuff and he's he's taking time away and he's saying it's really negatively affecting him and and, and all that sort of stuff so he's one that has some enemies his enemies what is pretty much his own audience and he hasn't handled it he's allowed his audience to control him and his situation, his enemies to control him rather than him controlling his enemies. And the one thing that I kind of took away from this, and I know, Dr. Rod, you and I spoke about this a little bit in previous weeks. I don't know if it was last week or the, or the week before. But we spoke about changing our minds. Like, how do we as leaders change our mind? Um, and it seems like he's done a big shift from being this, skit style jovial kind of content to being really political and actually actually gone on gone on a war path to try to cancel people and everything like that and now he's kind of you know, you know, being somewhat cancelled right he cancelled himself so I think the one lesson that I take away from this is, if you want to control your enemies, don't create them, I suppose. Like, it, like it's kind of like if you're building something, if you're building an audience, if you have your followers that know you and and, and can relate to you and, and are following a certain thing that you do, if you change that, then obviously those people are going to be haters, especially considering you're going to do something that's anti what they have all kind of built their following up on. And while not everyone wants to become a YouTuber, it's still relevant to leaders is we can be leading people in a particular way and then just change everything about it. No, our organization is now going to have a completely different focus or I'm, I've got a completely different attitude to things and you're going to create enemies. And those enemies are going to be the people that made you. They're your followers. And therefore, they're the people that are going to uh, cause you. Know, they're going to control your destiny now. So, Dr. Rod, what's your thought about him doing this shift from, from you know, skit style prank kind of stuff to now becoming really political and trying to cancel people and everything like that and the, the change that he's had? Well, it might indicate that there's a bit of confusion over his purpose. So he wasn't sure why he started mm. his YouTube channel in the first place and then it morphed into something perhaps he, he hadn't even planned and clearly he now regrets it. Look, I feel sorry for the guy. I feel sorry for anybody who withdraws from what they clearly love doing 
uh, because there's been a negative reaction. He's a young guy. I think he'll come out of this a little bit older and a little bit wiser, and, and I trust and hope that he's able to share his great talent um, with us again in the future. I think uh, wisdom might have said to him, listen to Jordan Peterson, and uh, wisdom might also have said to him, listen, mate. It Well, wisdom in America wouldn't say, listen, mate, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Look, um, I think wisdom might, might, have, might have said, uh, it's very hard to make enemies out of conservatives, but yes. it's very easy to make enemies out of those who lean towards the left politically. And the problem that he's had is that he turned out not to be lockstep with the hard left. Mm -hmm. He made statements about the Hamas-Israel conflict that didn't line up with the overall narrative of those who are on the left politically, and so they attacked him. So what does that demonstrate? They don't love anybody. No, They don't well, love I mean, anybody. They're only in love with this, ideas. Yeah, and there's this, there's this saying that I, that I hear a lot of the commentators say is, you're never left enough for the left. Oh, like, of course there, not. No, no. There's nothing. You just can't be no. left enough. Like, no. like that's it. And I think you touched on that point. And we're going back. And yes, we are. We're banging the the drum a little bit tonight because it, it's important. Purpose. You mentioned maybe he's he didn't understand his purpose, or maybe he just had it, the wrong purpose. Which which kind of you know at the start maybe it was just about views, right? That's his purpose: build subscribers, build views, and. When you're chasing those types of of um, of pur of purpose or, or goals, if those are those extrinsic things, right? Then they're, ne they're never enough. They're not fulfilling enough. But when you know you're running a purpose, like we've kind of mentioned this on our podcast before, there's certain topics that we know get you know, our, vi our our videos get get views and really good views and everything like that. But we're not, that's not the, pur the purpose of us starting this is not about building a YouTube channel. While we hope it does, and if you like our stuff, give us a subscribe and give us a like and, you know, the bell notification and all that kind of YouTube algorithm stuff, like, great. Like, great. If it organically, as it organically grows, great. But we know we're doing our purpose. It's, and our purpose is not about building views, building subscribers, because if your purpose is something that's, you know, like extrinsic or, 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 you know, I don't want to say shallow because I know it's important for YouTube, you know, that you have the subscribers and you have the views. But if you're just chasing that, then you'll make decisions that maybe aren't the best decisions just to get the views. I mean, you, you speak to all these YouTubers, people like Logan Paul and, um, and Jake Paul and stuff like that, that are, that they've gone through their fall from grace and, and stuff like that because they were just trying to make things more and more hysterical to try to get more and more views. And eventually it all it all falls apart. How do we, other than obviously knowing what our true purpose is, which is important, and if you're looking for your purpose, like link in description, our free leadership development program gives you the first, first 10 weeks focuses on helping you discover your purpose. Yes, yet another a shameless plug for our free leadership development program. Um, I'm doing a lot of those today. Don't know why, um, but we're talking about purpose, and purpose is purpose is the core of what I do and our organisation and the way we do our leadership. So, um, so it makes makes sense. But, Doctor Rod, if we are doing something. And we don't feel like I mean because like obviously. He was doing something, let's say it's for the views, and he feels like he wants to make a shift. How do we make that shift without alienating people? Or is it just in inevitable that we're going to? Well, look, if you're talking about the hard left politically, and most people on the left are now hard left because the whole political spectrum has shifted so far mm. and so quickly uh, towards the left, you're going to make enemies. You just need to accept that. And it will take a long time, I think, to, to rebuild. Uh, look, I, you know, I hope Ethan doesn't stay away for too long. I think it would be very mm. sad if he did. But but in, in his time out, he really does need to sort out what is his purpose in having a, a YouTube channel? What is it he's setting out to, to achieve? And uh, once he sorted that out, what is the best way 
in which to do that. I mean, I think it would be great for him to have a small set of mentors, three or four people who can mentor him um, a, as you do and, mm-hmm. and um, you know, just bounce things bounce things off them. But, look, it, it, it's hard uh, and, and I suppose for most of us, particularly people my age, we've transitioned from perhaps one, one if you like, perspective to another both slowly and privately. Mm. Certainly when I was young, there was no such yep. thing as YouTube or Facebook or, or any of those digital communication channels because we didn't even have desktop computers. Mm. And uh, so our transition was by and large a private transition. For someone like like Ethan, his transition was very public, of course, because he did it virtually overnight uh, on a YouTube channel. Yeah. And then, of course, as soon as he stepped out of line, at least in the eyes of the left, they come down on him like the proverbial ton of bricks. So he, he does really need to sort it. So why why do I want a, want a YouTube channel? If it's mm-hmm. just to maximise the number of likes and the number of subscribers, then just be an actor, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. The, in, in Jesus' days, the, the Greek word was hypocrite. That, that's what actor means, <laughs> yes. a hypocrite. Be one. You know, uh-huh. be the best you can, the best actor or the best hypocrite that you can be. Um, but just bear in mind, of course, that if you upset the people on the left, they will come after you. You can upset us conservatives as much as you like, but we're, we're, we will almost always maintain our position of courteous debate because that's part of the conservative agenda. Mm, that's good. And we tend to be a little bit more forgiving. Well, I mean, to the extent that we've been in, influenced by a Christian worldview, we, yep. we, we do forgive and um, we do a fair bit of turning of the cheek as well. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, aren't they lucky? <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> so, so to handle haters, like, you know, a lesson we can learn from, from, um, uh, from Ethan Klein, I forgot his last name there for a moment. A uh, lesson we can learn from Ethan Klein from H3 Productions. How do we handle our haters? How do we control our haters? Don't let them control us by overnight changing who we are. Look, if you feel like you want to make a shift, do the journey. We spoke about this last, for sure it was last week. Make make the journey progressive. Let let. Let people know that you're doing the journey. Explain the journey. You maybe maybe start if we're talking YouTube or whatever, but this is in business as well. Maybe start something else as well on the side that that plays towards that that um, that new desire or that new new track that you want to take, rather than trying to convert everyone within your existing platform to to become this new you know to new, this new audience or whatever that they may not be ready or may not be willing. Give people an opportunity, an option to come along that journey with you, and 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 help explain that process as well. So, so how do we handle? How do we control enemies? Well, don't let them control us by changing, um, changing who we are overnight, um, and uh, and then shocking them and forcing them to be enemies. I suppose that's that's the real that's the real lesson there. Hey, you've just watched an excerpt from the On the Cube leadership podcast if you liked it give it a thumbs up if it challenged your leadership or inspired you in some way put a comment below and if you want to watch the full episode or more content like this check out our channel and hey consider subscribing while you're there